Hey, go over here. Sorry. Hey, go over here with a guide on Clara, the most precious character in Star Rail. She can be beefy while still putting some of the highest damage I've seen, provided she face tanks every hit in the game. For this guide, I've collaborated with my friend Miss Stathy, who is the most dedicated Clara TCA I've ever seen. And we will also need help from Clover's trusty robot, so help me Mr. Gorog. Today we'll be going through her stats, abilities and how they work, traces and eidolons, and then her pros and cons. Then we'll discuss her best relics and rank her light cones and finish with her rotations and team compositions. If you like these guides and want more, like and maybe consider subscribing, as I'm doing in-depth guides on every unit in the game. Let's begin. Clara is a 5 star physical character and part of the standard 5 star units in the game. She follows the destruction path which is a path for a hybrid DPS known for survivability or health based mechanics. She has a high base HP of 1241, a very high attack of 737 and a base defense of 485. She does have a low base speed of 90 but also a low energy cost of 110. As a destruction unit she has an innate higher chance of being hit compared to most characters. Her base HP ranks her as the third beefiest unit in the game, and her attack ranks her as the second highest in the game. For defense, she's also above average, in the top 9 for defense, and her energy cost is below average. Unfortunately, she doesn't wear sneakers, so her speed is the lowest in the game. The thing is that low speed actually helps her kid out immensely, so having such high base stats apart from speed is a godsend for Clara without even looking at her damage numbers. So let's check out her abilities and how exactly they work. A basic I want to help will not let Clara help and instead will send Svarog flying at the enemy for a sucker punch. This will deal a standard amount of physical damage to one enemy, dealing 30 toughness damage, regenerating 20 energy as well as one skill point. Let's now check out her talent as that is the core component that ties the rest of her kit together. Her talent, because we're family, will grant Clara three different effects. The first is a 10% damage reduction when she is hit by enemy attacks. Great base damage reduction. The second is that whenever she is hit, Svarag will mark the attacker with mark of counter. The third is that Svarag will counter attack, hitting the enemy for a large amount of physical damage. This will deal 30 toughness damage and regenerate 5 energy every counter. Since she has to be hit to counter, this theoretically can regenerate way more energy. This has no restrictions unlike March's counters. If you get hit, you will counter. This is Clara's primary source of damage and what her kit revolves around. Her skill, Svarag watches over you, is an AoE damaging skill. It will deal a great amount of physical damage to all enemies and then will double said damage if they have a mark of counter applied from Clara's talent. After using the skill, the marks will be removed. This skill will deal 30 toughness damage to all enemies, regenerate 30 energy and consume 1 skill point. Her ultimate, Promise, not Command, gives her 3 new bonuses. The first is that her damage dealt to her reduces by an extra percentage, 25% at max level. Combined with her talent, it will give her 32.5% damage reduction, since damage reduction is multiplicative. The second is that she has a very high aggro increase for 2 turns, meaning every enemy will suddenly want to hit Clara much much more. Finally, Svarag's counter will be enhanced for the next 2 counters, now making him counter whenever any ally is attacked, increasing the damage multiplier against the enemy that takes a counter, as well as now doing splash damage per counter equal to 50% of the multiplier on the central target. Remember that this is 2 turns, and remember that this buff will tick down if you use it before your turn's action, so you'd want to use your ultimate after Clara has taken action. This ultimate costs 110 energy and will refund 5 energy. Finally, Clara's technique, a small price for victory, is an attacking technique, so use buffs before it. When using this and entering battle, Clara has an increased chance of being hit for 2 turns, allowing her to perform counters frequently from the get-go. So, face tanking every enemy in the game is her definition of a small price to pay. This will deal 60 toughness damage to all enemies weak to physical. Now let's review her major traces, trace bonuses and leveling priority. Her first ascension passive is Kinship. When she is attacked, she has a 35% fixed chance, so unaffected by effect hit rate, to remove a debuff placed on her. This is excellent, especially to combat deadly effects that can ruin her damage output like CCs, as well as to combat any dot damage or any nasty debuff in general. This can also remove debuffs if they are applied before the attack hits itself, though this changes depending on the enemy. Her second ascension passive is under protection. She will have a 35% chance to resist CC debuffs, which is another layer of protection against a weakness of hers. This reduces the chance of being CC'd by max level enemies with a 100% base chance to 86% chance. Not bad. Finally, revenge is her third ascension passive. It will increase Svarog's counter damage by 30%, which is pretty immense to have outside of Eilons. 
This is a big DPS increase and great focus resources towards. Note that this doesn't increase the multiplier, this increases the damage percent, so it's additive with any damage percent bonuses. Her trace bonuses are in physical damage percent, which is perfect, attack percent, which is great for damage and scales well with her very high base attack, and then HP percent, which is also great due to her high base HP and is nice for the amount of hits she will be tanking. For trace priority, focus on your ultimate, then talent, along with skill, and then basic. You won't be basic attacking that frequently, so it's okay not to level. All of her essential passives are great to get, and her bonuses are too. So let's now review her Eidolons, which are actually pretty OP. Her first will make her skill no longer remove marks of counter on the enemy. This is pretty big buff and fixes some damage issues if the enemies decide to no longer attack you. So your skill will now be doing its maximal damage provided an enemy has hit Clara once already. This does mean her skill can be used more, but still, you need to make sure you have skill points for the rest of the team as we'll see later. Her second will give her 2 turn 30% attack boost after using her ultimate. So her ultimate now has 4 big effects and wants to not be used at the start of her turn even more so. It's a great buff. Her fourth will give her an extra 30% damage reduction when she's hit that lasts till the start of her next turn. Combining this with her talent will result in a damage reduction of 37% and with her ultimate will result in a total damage reduction of 52.75%. Fire MC would be proud. Her fifth increases her ultimate and talent levels by 2, enhancing her counter damage output by a ton and increasing the max damage reduction to 54%. Her final one is bonkers. After any other allies hit, Svara gets a 50% fixed chance to trigger the talent's counter and also mark them with the same mark of counter. Furthermore, when using your ultimate, you'll gain another enhanced counter stack, now a total of 3. So this is pretty insane and makes Clara's eventual problem of not being hit almost a non-issue now. This also ramps her marks up quickly at the start of fight, so you can start skill spamming for massive damage. An extra ultimate enhanced counter is the cherry on top, perfect way to end Eidolons. So her kit is pretty solid. But what are her pros and cons? One pro is her counter mechanic. She could be outside of her turn yet dish out some great damage. This means she doesn't even need to use skill points. Another is her high damage capacity. Her multipliers and amount of time she can theoretically proc them means Clara can be top tier in damage. Another pro is her aggro increases. She can take away some of the aggro from her teammates and allow squishier units to survive a bit better. This means she forms a sort of hybrid tank DPS role. Kind of how Arlen works, she can provide nice damage from main DPS and also provide them with skill points without losing too much of her damage. Alongside the aggro means she is a very nice unit to have on any team. Next we have her self damage reduction. It stacks up to be quite a bit, so in combination with her high base defensive stats, she can be quite the tank. Next her debuffs removal and CC resistance is great and kind of mitigates a problem with follow up or counter attack units, though it is not perfect. Finally she has a great spread of damage. Her counters do a lot of single target, but her AoE skill in combination with her ultimate enhanced counters provide Clara with both single target and AoE options for damage. Now her cons. Versus her aggro based damage, if she doesn't get hit, she will do nearly no damage at all. If she does get hit constantly, she's going to be tearing enemies apart. Her damage is thus RNG based and she has some ways of helping being hit, but it's not perfect. To follow, she relies on being hit for some energy gain too. So not being hit enough results in a cycle of not getting her ultimate, and thus not getting hit even more with the aggro increase. The second is CC. Though sports like Natasha and Watcher can help her with this. If she does get CC'd, she won't be performing any counters. Another con is broken or CC'd enemies will also reduce her damage by quite a bit. Quantum or imaginary allies, especially so with break effect stats, or an ice ally that breaks or freezes a lot, will stop enemies from taking action, and thus Clara loses a lot of her potential. If enemies aren't taking actions, they aren't hitting Clara and Svarig is not hitting back. Though this is fine if she's playing a sub DPS role. Finally, she's actually difficult to use. She has some variety in gameplay depending on how the battle happens. A lot of people's problem with Clara is they don't know how to use her in the moment of the battle. More counters means perhaps the skill use is optimal, but not having many skill points and being at low health may need you to instead use a basic attack to let your team sustain. We will see more in her rotation section. Now onto relics. Relics are pretty simple. 4 piece physical will grant you the most damage and is her best option regardless of playstyle. A 2 piece combo with musketeer is also possible. For plain ornaments the only option is inner Sao Soto since you won't be hitting that 120 speed for space ceiling station and it won't be better at 120 speed either way. Clara's counters also count for inert Sao Soto's follow up bonus damage percent which is massive. The main stats you'll go crit, 
attack percent, physical damage percent, and attack percent. Pretty simple. NG Rope is not worth the loss in damage as far as we have calculated. For subsets, you prioritize getting a few subsets in speed, until she hits about 96 speed, unless you're running her with a speed booster, and then all the rest in crit and attack. Break effect is fine as a final subset, but any bonus tank stats are pretty much nicer. For Light Cones, her best in slot will of course be something irreplaceable for its irreplaceable synergy with Clara. It provides her with immense base stats, free attack percent, some sustain, and some easily obtainable damage percent buffs. Her second will be the free on the fall of an Eon. She can break pretty easily, and the attack stats are chunky enough for it to excel on her regardless. A Secret Vow is great for her for the damage percent, but it's hard to keep uptime on the second passive if you're playing her with a sustain or shielder, which is what you want to do. Finally, Nowhere to Run is nice and can provide similar sustain to her signature light cone, but I would prioritize other battle pass light cones and just pick up Eon for Clara. Also take note that Blade will be coming out soon and his light cone may be nice for her, but we don't know what it does just yet. For rotations, it is very tricky, and before we start, make sure to take it all with a grain of salt. Her energy as we've said is RNG based and enemy hits provide different energy gains depending on the enemy. Most seem to provide 10 and some can provide higher. And no enemies provide 2 and barely any provide 5, unlike what we thought at the start of the game. So we've assumed different amounts of counters and 10 energy per tanked hit. So as a baseline, which is weird because she will counter in her ult anyway, we have a 4 turn rotation for Clara. This isn't her normal rotation though, this is just a baseline. Against 2 enemies or AoE hitting boss and 2 tank hits, Clara takes 3 turns to get her ultimate back which is pretty standard. She will always be gaining at least 15 energy per ultimate from the 5 energy refund and then the 10 energy for the 2 counters, which will activate regardless of who was hit. With an energy rope this shaves it off by half an action which is why we don't really need the rope. If she was hit on one of the ult counters we then shave off half an action, same goes with energy rope. If she was hit twice, which is lucky, then she shaves off another half action leading to a 2 turn rotation if everything goes according to plan and NG Rope won't improve this one. Funny, if she gets hit twice and has her best support, Ting Yun, she can get her ultimate back from just one skill alongside Ting Yun's ultimate. But you would prefer using a 2 turn rotation because you won't be getting Ting Yun's ultimate enough to constantly 1 turn rotation on Clara, and you'd waste your 2 turn uptime with a 1 turn rotation. Use Ting Yun's ultimate instead to secure the 2 turn rotation. The conclusion here is that 3 turn rotation is standard, 2 turns if you're lucky or using Ting Yun. NG Rope is not needed to improve these rotations as it's RNG anyway. So to play her you basically tank hits and charge up your ultimate to tank more hits and do more damage. Her skill unless E1 should only be used if you have a bunch of marks up, and even with E1 or marks up, team sustain takes priority. If you run Clara as a sub DPS, the skill points should also be saved for your main DPS and Clara can still provide a ton of damage without using her skill points. If you are safe and stacked on skill points, you can go and use her skill regardless. For Sinji's, Ting Yun is Clara's undoubtedly best support in the game. Her buffs provide attack percent and damage percent, but the additional damage from Benediction applies on every single counter. Clara is slow and thus Ting Yun can cycle at least 3 turns per Clara's 4. This also means Ting Yun barely needs the skill since Clara will be holding onto those turn based buffs for a while. Finally the NG is excellent and together makes Clara have no downtime on her ultimate benefits. The new Yukong is also excellent for Clara. If you position Yukong just before Clara, which you don't need any speed subsets for, you can skill and even ultimate and Clara will consume one bowstring stack and retain the second bowstring stack for every single counter. For sustain you have Bailey Waller Watcher. The Watcher is much safer for the cleanse and will also give Clara healing every single counter, being a stronger version of her signature's healing and ensuring no one will be dying. Bailey can work great though, Lu Watcher is just a luxury. For main DPS, alongside her you have any hunt hypercarry or erudition for AoE enemies. Sushan for example works great for Clara's downtime and damage since E1 Sushan can go ham on any broken enemy, whereas Clara would not benefit very much from this broken enemy. You also have the possibility of monophysical with her. March 7th is a known synergy, but Mist and I both agree that she doesn't bring as much as people like to think. Bringing March is hard as a solo sustain, so you usually want to bring a second sustain removing one buffer, or the main DPS, from the equation. She needs high investment and usually E6 to sustain the team, and sustaining the team means aggro increases on her teammates and not on Clara, as well as making her very SP negative. Her freezes are also anti-synergy. The biggest anti-synergies are Jeppard, Welt and Fire MC due to the aggro increases or taunts, and to Welt slow and CCs. As for her teams, they have set patterns. 
Though the examples might not be her best, they are just examples using the roles I provide. So you can run a hypercarry Clara with two supports and a solar sustain, or one hypercarry support and two sustains. This would be, for example, Yukong Luwatcher, Tingyong Clara, or you can replace Yukong Luwatcher with two weaker sustains. You can also bring her as a sub DPS, so you bring a solar sustain or double sustain again, alongside a main DPS that Clara will provide skill points for, while still providing a bunch of the team's damage, and taking away aggro from said main DPS. This could be, for example, Clara, Bailu, Tingyong, Zila, or Clara, Natasha, Fire MC, and Su Shang. My favorite teams on her is the Yukong, Tingyong, Luwatcher, Clara team, where she will be providing insane damage and healing thanks to the supports. They basically turn her into a whole new demon. Monophysical is a nice team, Natasha, Sushang or Bonk MC, Silver Wolf and Clara. The only problem is that added breaks hurt some of her damage but Sushang would love those breaks. Also Silver Wolf would usually provide more help to another team than to this one. Anyway that's all on Clara, thanks to my members very much and thanks for watching, have a good day.